Um, today, casting is myself, Comet K, with uh, Mr. Has a five four three two one semifinalist, big pro, uh, big lad, big boy, uh, ladies man. And today we're gonna have Stop a match. It, I'm blushing. <laughs> a match between Kaiser Klein and Mido, part of the round of eight quarterfinals, New Year's Classic round of eight quarterfinals. As I already said, best of five series. First to three points wins. Five maps in the pool. Uh, both players, uh, I think, someone banned Pompa Sierras, the other banned Klondike, but either way, we're going to be starting off on Florida. Hazard, do you have anything to say? Um, Not much, but right off the bat, it is a coin start, which is quite, I think it's good for Germans in this situation. Obviously, because China's great start doesn't change, but it's good for Germans because you can obviously just get hunty dogs immediately. Like, he's probably queuing it right now. I think he is. He should be. That's true. Let's look um, at the units this... in queue or text being researched, I might say. Yeah. Yeah. He should have queued it like immediately. But, um, <laughs> I think overall, I think this is a good map for China just because um, there's sheep everywhere and um, safe TP behind your base. So Germans can't really punish that in H2 and that sort of stuff. So overall, I think, and there's a lot of resources. Well, which I think favors China. So I yeah, think that's just like this map slightly better for them in this matchup. Certainly, a lot of resources in every single direction. And that's just the case with Florida. We're going to see Mido starting off with a TP. Yeah. He's, of course, he's playing China. It is a mono civilization tournament, so that's the only match. Uh, that's the only civ we're going to see from Mr. Mido is China against Kaiser Klein's Germany. Of course, um, so we do see that first trading post uh, in lieu of a village or, you know, maybe some market text from the China player. Not really too useful to get them in the early game. Actually, wow. Oh, no, that's a, that's his first village. I thought he was putting down a second village, which would be really, really difficult to do considering um, that would be 600 wood in age one. Uh, it's just something that's really not viable. But yeah, so I think um, I just want to take a look at Mido's deck. He does only have northern refugees, so he's only going to get two villagers from that shipment. But a big contention over there, 75 wood being stolen by Kaiser Klein. Um, while he... Sorry to cut you off. Kaiser was originally going, but Mito sneaked past him and then tried to take it because he was quite far away from the treasure, but obviously he didn't kill it in time. I don't but think this quite is nice actually... It's certainly nice. It's not the worst thing to get stolen. Of course, 75 wood is big, especially for uh, China. It's a little bit less big for Germany, I'd say. Of course, it's going to expedite his trade post, but that's all about all it does. It's not like the biggest thing. Um, and both explorers are actually at high hit points, and I think Kaiser Klein actually did a really good job microing his explorer there to be able to get away from uh, the Chinese monk's snare, but uh, with the disciple coming forward, yeah. going to alter that pathing and actually get him back into snare and put in some more damage. I've noticed Mitre is very good at blocking um, units with other units to make his hero keep snaring. Like, for example, putting the Disciple in front of the uh, Kaiser Explorer. He, he does that a lot versus me, and he's pretty good at it. And he's just like, I think that's a really nice skill to have in H1 because that can turn like small things into big advantages, like big treasures and stuff like that. So, uh, going on to the point of the well, yeah, it's, uh, it only contributes to his TP, and you can, you can, he, um, you can only use that at like 3.30 minute mark, so it's not a big deal. Whilst China could probably use it immediately on a market tech, because the market's already up. Uh, Mito going for 60 food, and that should speed up his age up, because I think he should be clicking up in about 20 seconds or something, maybe 10 seconds. Um... What's that to say? Is, has Mito got a seed? No. And neither of them do. Okay. Alright, so we see Mito clicking. He is putting vills on. Sometimes he leaves it, uh, just have zero vills on the one. Slow age FF, but I don't think that's a good idea versus Germans. And yep. he is chopping as well, so it looks like he might be playing some sort of colonial play. Already having uh, that trade post up, he's not really going to need or be feel obligated to build one in transition for whatever strategy he's going to go for. But of course, like you said, uh, four villagers on the wonder, that's going to expedite the age up by 30 seconds. So normally it would take uh, the wonder 120 seconds to build, but with four villagers on it, it's only going to take 90 seconds, which puts it more in line with uh, a standard European age up time. 
yeah, it is, I think it's exactly the European age up time with four bills, like on point with it, on par. I mean, um, Maito's done a good job of herding, which is something vital versus Germans because they obviously get free cav. Like, he's, he's Kaiser just aged, he's probably shipping a shipment immediately, so they'll Mulans will be on the field at about by like 5.15 or something, so he needs to have every single herd under his TC that he possibly can. Might be going for a consulate, by the way, and now he's stopped chopping, so it looks like he'll go 300 export and then 700 coin. And Kaiser's probably going to see this, actually, as well, mm. which is quite big. He's definitely scouted the consulate, at least. Maybe he isn't quite aware of it, he just sees the building and construction. He'll have to click on it to truly know what it is. And seeing that he's he, sieging it, he I definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah he's, he, what he it definitely is. knows. Because all China buildings sort of have this shape. It could be a market, it could be a war academy, it could be... Yeah, that's pretty much what else it, other else it could be. Um, so yeah, he obviously will click on it. Yeah, Kaiser's very China conscious about uh, using his Explorer in early age 2 to get that information, scouting out his opponent's base. Uh, we did see a very early placed uh, staple from the German player, and given his macro, it was an easy 5 Yulin batch just popping out right now yeah. but of course the two Yulins from the shipment coming into the base five minutes 45 seconds gonna be putting on some pressure on the China player and I think this is gonna be a common theme uh, Mito yeah. losing villagers at five, the six minute mark uh, sentries being called yeah, yeah that's gonna be good <laughs> I wonder if that will happen every game <laughs> but I hope Kai's actually goes up on these nice treasures of this hero and these Yulans like even this can be quite good versus China. And there's a native scout at the back of the map as well. And obviously, if Maito's got like red coats in base and all the bills under his TC, it's going to be quite hard to raid him. And the sentries, of course. So here's the 700 coin. So he's going to try and age now. He's got red coats out. Um, I wonder if Kai's is going to add crossbows or something to put some pressure on and then age up. Or if he's just going to age and not make any more units. So we don't yeah, see the two bear. He has. Yeah, we see the 700 wood on the floor about to be gathered up. Um, of course, I think if you were to go for a barracks play, you know, building in the mixing in those expo men like you mentioned, I think it just might be too slow because we can see the German player, excuse me, uh, the Chinese player is about to queue up to uh, the fortress age. That six red coats is actually a really interesting um, tech choice. You don't usually see uh, Chinese players going for the early consulate. You you would usually send, see them send like something like uh, the nine Cheng pikemen. But I, I do really like this. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, getting that um, 300 export, it also saves him 75 export for having alliance with the British. It just cheapens uh, the entry cost to alliance with anything. So it's better than the Chang pikemen in that, of course, the, the Redcoats are, for one, going to scale better than the Chang pikemen are. And two, yeah. it also saves him a bit of export. That's true. Also, like, Redcoats are just a more practical unit, and, um, and the HP buff on the Vils is quite too, and on the hero and everything, so that's quite handy for like defending. Yeah, just a much better optimized build order from a Mito, and I don't think I've ever seen this. I mean, it's probably been in the meta game for a while, but I this is the first time I'm seeing it, and I'm actually, I I think this it's, I'll it's incorporate quite smart. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a really smart build because lots of people like to go musk hus or just hus or just musk versus China, and like obviously red coats are like really safe versus that with Minutemen, so I just think it's a good build so far. He's also aging with the tower, putting up a second trade post. And Germans are going to be up quite slowly compared to China because it's 700 coins just came in now and he's still gathering it. He's put a lot of settler angles on it because he needs to age up ASAP. Otherwise China's going to right click him in any moment. Well, in the next couple of minutes I'd say. Um, so that tower is still on export but I think he will change that sooner rather than later. Or maybe he's forgotten about it. That's always a big issue if you forget about it. <laughs> and he has forgotten about it. I'm trying to get a second batch of red coats, but I doubt that. Um, Kaiser has got a big Yulon mass, actually. Um, so I reckon he's going to tech you, uh, vet Yulon and ship and train skirms and try and push, maybe. After like two fortress shipments. But we'll see. 
Yeah, uh, a little bit late of a Fortress Age time from the German player. I think Kaiser chose to build, I'm not sure if it was like just 10 Ulins, it seems as though there's like 16 in the bunch there. So maybe that was just the, the three shipments from uh, three settler wagon, 700 wood, 700 yeah. coin, and then 10 yeah. built. I don't think he did yes. three batches. Okay. But he also didn't lose any Ulins, which is important to note. He didn't lose any to TC fire, any to just sloppy management. So he's going to be, ha he just has so many, U just, he's going to get so much value out of that veteran U Ulin upgrade. Also going to try to use a, just two Ulins to revive his Explorer. Uh, nice I like that. He's going to pull him as well. Oh, yeah. look at him sprint. Look at him go. Usain Bolt over there. The German version. <laughs> but yeah, you could see, by the way, he was capturing his Ulon. He's going back and forth to get the hero in range of the ball. Because obviously there's like a minimum range of the way to pull it. And he just kept him just in range. So that was nice of him. Um, he might get a Vill note. Might I saw it. Um, oh, he will get a bill. Uh, Kaiser's not paying attention. It's a shame. So I think uh, the way this, um, this game is playing out is kind of to that NR10 style that I know Kaiser Klein actually isn't a big fan of. Uh, and him, him being a German main, of course, that is kind of just the way, you know, things go, uh, usually. Uh, a German really yeah. like that Fortress game plan, and of course we're going to see uh, four war wagons as uh, Kaiser Klein's first units in... Uh, Fortress Age. I think that's kind of interesting, especially versus China, especially this early. Hold on one sec. Mm -hmm. So war wagons aren't usually the best units that perform uh, against Chinese comp Chinese's composition. Of course, China has you know the skirmishers, Chukonu, uh, Cheng Pikemen, uh, the arc, the uh, Cheng Daos, which are you know age three pikemen basically. So they focus on that skirm uh, pike composition, um, infantry based. Of course, sometimes you see, or usually you see, players mix in uh, China Cav early into their composition, but even still, it's just not enough to warrant this, you know, War Wagons as being your first batch and even your second batch from your stable uh, in the Fortress Age. Um, of course, uh, you know, Kaiser Klein is not playing this aggressive at all. His first shipment in the Fortress Age himself was a thousand wood, so he's choosing to play it much more economically, going to go for like a mid Fortress timing push. Whereas Mito, you know, I spoke with him yesterday after we were done casting, and I do have some insider information, and I know that his game plan on Florida is to win this map, and then in going into game two, he's also going to win that, and hopefully in game three, uh, he'll make uh, Kaiser Klein resign, and that'll be the series. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> sorry about that, I'm back. No worries, no worries. Uh, sorry, who shipped, who shipped 1k wood? I should because his mass is a little bit small at the moment. It's actually both players, and Harry, can I ask, uh, do you have your UI installed? I do not, <laughs> actually. Oh my god, uh, you had all the time in the world to install it before we went in-game, but you failed I, me I've here. Never, I've never installed it, I've never <laughs> needed it. Really. You've just got the sixth sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. Alright, so this stable on the front is actually going to punish Kaiser, because he's going to get that down basically for free, and that's going to be before Vet Yulons, maybe, if he's lucky. I don't know if it's being researched, but that stable's going really fast down, and the Yulons aren't even vet. And he's quickly rebuilding it at base now. So I was watching the text being completed, re uh, text being researched tab, and I could actually see that it wasn't completed. So yeah, like you said, uh, Kaiser Klein had exactly the 200 wood for that upgrade, oh. but wasn't able to get it in. But we do see the Hessians come out for. The German player, that's definitely going to bolster his skirmisher mass. Uh, he is out mass, but with these uh, Hessians, they're so strong that he's actually going to be able to take the, you know, take back the momentum, even though, you know, he's uh, technically <laughs> down on count. He's out mass for like double the skirms, and yet he's forcing him back just because they're that strong. Oh, some dirty Mike shots. Just yeah, he's losing so many. Like a Changdao Redcoat Disciple, just random, like. Infantry units just dropping. Mido actually does have the um, infantry combat card for China. It upgrades uh, oh, Cheng Dao and uh, Arcabussier by 15% hit points and 15% attack. Uh, we do see the veterancy for the Yulins coming oh, in, but awkward, good. awkward padding. This is so important because I, I suppose it's a little bit laggy. Okay, okay. Oh, I see. That might have been why there was a, a bit of a... It, it might have been uh, something like uh, an attack move issue with uh, Mido's skirmishers that made them walk forward. Seems both players are content now. 
I think he needs to back, back and back. wait for some China six war wagons. Well, I can see the lag now. Just some continued kiting and more jockeying for the positioning, but I think uh, a lot of skirmishers dying for the German player there, but... Uh, some... Oh, iron troops! Oh, wow! That's definitely not something you see, but that's basically, you know, China's answer to Jaeger's iron troops. They're a very strong uh, archer-type unit, kind of like a skirmisher. They don't have, like, they're not like a longbowman or, or a Yumi archer where they have a lot of range. They only have 16 range, so just as much as a Chukonu, but they have an extremely fast firing rate. Uh, with that attack and that puts them like even like they have more damage output than Jaegers. Yeah, they're, they're way better and because 60% range resist they have to die to Cav and obviously Yulans are like so low HP that it's impossible to kill them basically. But you can kite them of course. Um, but it's going to take a long time to kite them. <laughs> <laughs> that one soaked the entire volley of like 30 Jaeger, uh, 30 skirms including Jaeger. Just look at, look, just look at them go. Just killed a bunch of skirms. Mido is going to have to be very careful about when he chooses to go in with his Chengdao. Of course, you can see so many of them just getting ripped to pieces by these the skirmisher mass yeah. of the German player. Whenever he goes forward, so many of them are going to die, so he can only do that sparingly. But of course, if his pikemen are too far back, that uh, opens him up to the risk of the Yulins getting connected on his skirmishers. So he has to be very careful. And even when he's going back in situations like this, just so many units getting picked off. Uh, yeah. Five meteor hammers coming in. I think Kai's has got um, black rock. Because his mass hasn't really grown overly, which Germany usually has like a big mass, uh, like big reinforcement batches. And there hasn't been that sort of batch yet, so I think Black Riders is on the way. Because obviously the shipment would be here by now, I think. And I think Black Riders, because obviously China's got a mass cab now versus six war wagons. So the next shipment for the German player is actually going to oh, be no, nine units. Like you yeah. said, you know, it's some very awkward resource distribution for the German player. He's got a lot of coin, but not a lot of food with which to be able to build his units. Um, so we do see the nine Ulins coming in, um, and you know, these players still so even. This cavalry mass of uh, China has really shaped up, and this might be the engagement. Of course, China a melee sieve. They're gonna have like to. The Kaiser's in trouble. Yeah. One big engagement. He needs way more war. Like, everything's just gonna slam in for China. Look at that, these Yulans are just going to melt completely. Look how fast they're going down. And China literally just needs to select all the skirms and right click the war wagon and then just let the rest do the rest, kind of. That yeah, I can just soak the damage at the front as well. Still, so many cavalry alive for the Chinese player, and all of these Yulans are melting away. And another reinforcing batch, and there's like 10 or 12 cavalry for the Chinese player. Of course, he's lost all of his anti cavalry. Uh, he still has a few red coats, but he's lost all the Chengdao, but that's not the point. There's only skirmishers left on the field for the German player, and they're completely exposed. Whew, a nice yeah. pull, but it's not yeah, going to be enough. It's, it's not going to be enough. Like, he, he needs a batch of war wagons, ASAP, but like a big batch of U 15 Yulon, like 8 from the shipment, and then like probably 13 Yulon. It would be most likely. Minutemen Minute coming the way. as well. Uh, and the 11 Changdao clean trade that was going on as well. Uh, here comes the big batch of war wagons. Eight war wagons there. So that is three plus five. So well, that and will... that's going to be enough to repel them for now. Exactly. That's going to force back the China player. But with these war wagons, it's just not, not really the composition you need versus a huge huge mass of uh, skirmishers from the Chinese player. He's not really going to be able to engage unless he uses his skirmishers of his own, and he's outmassed right now, the German player that is. Uh, catching the raid nicely, going to pick off at least one of those um, cavalry units and getting a lot of damage in on two other ones, but big snipe going off for the war wagons. That makes that trade go about evenly. Kaiser just doesn't have enough units going on as well. Yeah, like, raids. So many, set of wag so many set of wagons just went down there. All over the place, and this just looks like um, Kaiser Klein being put on got... his deathbed. <laughs> He's still got three iron troops left. They just don't die. <laughs> yeah, in that big engagement, of course, we saw all of the Jaegers die for the German player while he was trying to escape his uh, skirmishers back to his base. 
uh, so yeah. we could get those reinforcing war wagons. But uh, the, the the iron troops just surviving forever with that sixty percent hit points, and of course, uh, yeah, just yeah, not being fired down. Iron troops versus Germans. I feel like German would have to go against them. I swear, or something. I don't know. I just don't see German killing them with Yulans ever. Another raid going on. This mine's exposed. Actually, he has transferred to this mine, but. That's extremely risky, but he has to, otherwise just he's just out of the game. At the moment, he's just trying to get catch up. So I think he should like add an artillery. Some I don't know, like how to kill all this infantry mass. And yeah, it's gonna be shouted out. It. Yeah, he's gonna find it. It's... Yeah, GG. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiser Klein feeling he played his absolute best in that game, and it just not being enough. Yeah, I was about, like, I does favor China with the free market and the um, the sheep all over the map. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it is a mono civilization tournament, so if you feel like this play style isn't working for you, you know, you just have to try a completely different strategy. I don't think, uh, you know, if you just feel like you're going to lose the mid fortress, late fortress game plan, no matter what you do, unless you get like a big catch, um, uh, you just shouldn't do it. You shouldn't play like this you need to take bigger risks so yeah that's going to be game one of course going to mito and i think that was actually a little bit unexpected i think players were expecting uh kaiser klein to blitz through this series um but that's not the case and mito proving his strategy to work i know he was going to go for a big infantry mass in that game and uh, riding off the back of that i think he's going to try to fake out a kaiser klein and think uh, in thinking that he's going to go for another infantry base composition in game two and I know, uh, possibly, you know, possibly. With, with my conversations with Mito, that's probably not the case in this instance. And we might see another fake out and Mito rolling up 2-0 into game three. And if that's the case, uh, it was actually part of Mike's plan to just kind of force Kaiser to mentally check out and feel like, uh, I just want to get this series over with. I don't even care at this point. And winning game one, uh, he's definitely set to continue on his game plan. Yeah, yeah, that was quite impressive by him. The um, the iron troops were like a really like Germans really struggle. Like people consider uh, Jaeger quite hard to deal with, but then iron troops are just probably even harder, especially with a Civ that doesn't have good cavalry units. I think Germans would have to go cannon. I don't really know, honestly, because Yulans just melt to like the China mass. So map two is yeah, map yeah. two is gonna be on Hudson Bay. And uh speaking of the tournament history between these players, I'm just taking a look here. And it seems that usually uh Kaiser Klein versus Mito, of course, is actually a very frequent matchup in tournaments. And they've met in yeah. let me count. One, two, three, four, five tournaments so far and four of those being in the semifinal three of those being in the semifinals um of course there was uh the spring 2017 championship where uh kaiser clan actually beat mito uh, for the bronze uh third place title and then as well uh bronze he kaiser clan lost in the war chiefs classic uh of 2016 or maybe that was 2017 but then in the autumn championship of 2017 uh, Kaiser again met Mito uh, in the semifinals, but Mito actually won that match and of course would go on uh, in the finals to defeat Goon Goon and win his uh, place as the uh, Autumn 2017 champion. But uh, that was, you know, uh, Mito's reign was kind of short-lived because in the ESOC Grand Tour, which was held just last summer, um, we saw Kaiser Klein take first place, uh, Mito being relegated to something like third, fourth place. Uh, he lost out to Nushalbar in the semifinals, but Kaiser Klein beat Nushalbar in the finals, and so you know both of these players have major tournament victories. Yeah, these players have got to the final quite a few times actually. I think I think Mito has got to the finals at least twice, and Kaiser's got to the finals once I think, but he did eventually win that I believe. I think he won. I'm trying. Yeah, he did. He the finals. Yeah, yeah, he won the finals. 
like Grand Tour or something. Oh, I can't remember the name. <laughs> he did win the final. There's just so many different names. Yeah. Honestly. Kaiser but, won uh, the Grand Tour finals, and I think he won a Sup Cup. And then Mido won the Mono Civ Tour, and then he won Autumn 2017. And those ah, are okay, both okay. of their big yeah. tournament wins. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if they get to the finals. This we'll see. Yeah, it would actually be really interesting to see Mido go to the finals again. Uh, considering he won the first Mono Civilization tournament, he did that with Japan and beat out uh, Sampu Kunku's uh, India in the finals. But oh, actually, yeah. Yeah. Sampu Kunku is another one of our semifinals playing Iroquois this time, but there is the uh, opportunity for him <laughs> to potentially go to the finals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, potentially. I th yeah, I think <laughs> it's my. Who, who's still in it? It's myself, Sampu, Kaiser, Maito, and these guys are in the quarterfinals to play versus Daruga in the semis, I believe. Yeah, so it'll be either Kaiser yeah. Klein versus Mido, uh, versus, it'll be either Kaiser Klein or Mido versus Diaruga in the semifinals, Diaruga playing Aztec, and then of course Yuhiri yes. versus uh, Sampu in uh, the semifinals on the other side of the bracket, Iroquois versus Spain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I could have got a better matchup, but I can't complain because I got ports beforehand, so, you know. It's, it's how this this tournament works you either get really good matchups or like really bad ones i think so i think i i i've, I've been quite in terms of my sieve bracket so i can't really complain that is part of the fun of it too you get to see um yeah. you know, some unorthodox yeah. strategies just to be able to win those unfavored matchups and in fact we saw diaruga beat snow and like Aztec versus Brit, that was something he was complaining about for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then he finally yeah. won it, and I then he won 3 yeah. yeah, I don't even think it's that bad, honestly, but I think it's quite even. Um, do we need a rehost, by the way? Ah, you're just no looking top at hunt. the... Uh... Okay, so we do have uh, this hunt. Let me just run the statistics real quick. So even, we have... I mean, even so... Sorry to cut you off. Even Kaiser has like safe hunts in the back, and Maito's hunts are going to be out in front, and that's going to be quite difficult to defend versus Germans, I think. So they actually have exactly the same amount of uh, huntables within their, you know, in within the range of their town center. Of course, there's that one hunt that's uh, up north. Um, excuse me. Maito gets this hunt, and his second hunt is pretty much yeah. So there is one missing hunt. I'll let the players yeah. know. Yeah, off of the re. But it seems like, of course, yeah, Mido, you know, we gave it the call, we gave the opportunity for Mido to uh, re-host there, and he's gonna choose to play on. It's not the biggest oh, impact. Okay. Um, you know, there is a juicy hunt for Kaiser Klein to the north there. That's going to be 3,000 food for him in those moose, as well as that silver mine. But there's only the silver mine for the Chinese player. But maybe, uh, you know, relying on that very safe resources isn't a part of China's game plan. Maybe we'll see him try to aggress a little bit more in age 3 or do something quirky. Uh, what was the treasure we I just saw? It, it was 60 weird, I think. Because mm. obviously that's a solid start for China. It means he has to chop less for the village and therefore age faster. And also it's the summer spawn, which China also likes. So maybe that's why he didn't want the re. Some nice treasures uh, for Mido early. 60 wood and 80 XP. Uh, Kaiser Klein got 80 food, which isn't like uh, too instrumental for Germany. In fact, I don't think there's any uh, treasures that are that big for Germany in uh, age one. Of course, food he, is he actually got, probably he, the best. Yeah, food or wood probably. Because they, they generally go market post in like every single crate start. Um, and sometimes it can be quite hard with only like 200 food start and 100 coin instead of 300 food. So that's quite good. I think he got 40 wooden base as well. So he had to chop less for the TP oh. uh, for the house <laughs> even. Yeah, I totally missed that. I was just, I was looking at Kaiser's base and I'm like, he didn't go market this game. I wonder what he did. And then I just completely forgot that there was a trade post. And that was his, uh, his, uh, building of choice in age one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, he had to chop less because of the t- uh, 40 wheel lock, I said. So I think that's going to smooth out his age up time as well. He might even consider eating sheep as well. No, here's and something... his XP treasures. Sorry. Exactly. Here's something that's really valuable for the German player. And I think Kaiser Klein's going to kite it. What is going on? He's just shooting it. I have no idea how he did that. It's some special kind of I think it's, it's kind of random. It is kind of random. You've got to slightly move back and click it. I think that's how you do it. I'm not sure. But it yep. does seem to be random. And Mito's going, wow, this is huge for China as well. 150 food. I'm not sure if it's going to be in time for him aging. No, no it's not. <laughs> Already it, cute to age up. Yeah, but that is Egypt. good regardless. He can take like a food now. Yeah, but he's only got two on food now. Yeah, just like you say, he can, uh, with that 150 wood, he doesn't need as many villagers uh, to keep on food in order to sustain villager production, so he can put more to coin, or excuse me, more to wood. And that'll ex expedite whatever, uh, you know, buildings he wants to build in the transition and early colonial age. <laughs> Wow, that's something you don't see every day. But I guess um, you know Hudson Bay he, being. He should just send another. He should just send another. Oh no! Wait, that one's wandered a bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And second TP going. Still chopping after it, so it looks like he's gonna play some sort of colonial defense again. Maybe a sort of semi, because I think prolonged colonial versus Germans is probably not the best idea. Um, so we see Kaiser chopping a lot still, despite aging up. Yeah, that is weird. Let's see if there's a market. There is a market on the field. Let's look at the uh, text being researched. Nothing in queue right now, but he already does have placer mines on hunting dogs for his villagers. The stable going up, but the explorer nowhere near uh, the trade post, so it's unlikely unlikely that he's going to go for a second one of those. But he did pick up. Was that a yeah. villager treasure or just uh, something hurting? Yeah, I guess he just Where? sent a villager up top. Uh, yeah, the one... yeah, He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did pick up fi um, 100 wood there, though, which is pretty nice for him. And we do see a war academy this time rather than a consulate. <clears throat> and we do see an in-base stable from Kaiser. I'm not sure this is a good idea. I think he might try and go for straight FF. That's what I would do here. Because I think that would be a good counter strat to what Maito's doing. We do see a set the wagon going for so you might be trying to do like a dot timing as well like ready for the set because set the way now and you might want to drop that racks like really forward like let's say here and try and siege down these two tps because he's probably scouted that he's got two tps at the moment and they're probably like three kills at the moment so uh, do we have a batch of three bows and three pipes yeah but not coming in at the right direction might lose another villager here oh, oh no should save it Save yeah. just uh, just barely. Uh, there was oh, one this monk that block. That yeah, like you were saying, that snare him, and then monk was like placed in front of the Yulans to try and snare them even more and get some more damage off on them. Uh, not oh, uh, nine pikes. Oh wow, yeah, this is different from uh, the build order. Um, Mito did on the first map, and you know, like I mentioned, I don't think it's quite as good. But I don't think uh, Mito is actually going for a fortress age agenda here. He, it seems like he's committing to age two a little bit more. Uh, his first card was 700 wood, so of course, no early fortress or fast fortress game plans uh, in the mix. Uh, but oh, gonna scout out this forward barracks, and that thing is gonna go down. It's not gonna get a single bow out. I mean, let's think. I'm gonna take a look at the units in queue. There are actually doppelsonders in queue, so if that's able to pop, oh, he might be there? able to get a good engage on these pikemen. You know, dops just slay other pikemen. Uh, and of course, Kaiser Klein's trying to buy as much time as possible with these Yulins. He's trying to get them out. Train way too slow. Ooh. <laughs> that that is so <laughs> unfortunate. Dude, that was just. Might say just he just kind of did like a counter strat because he's now he's aging because he's sending seven hundred coin. Yeah, you know, not only is that just going to buy Mido so much time, but it actually puts Kaiser Klein or not just puts him on the back foot, but it's just going to buy him so much time for whatever strategy he wants to do. So, of course, Kaiser Klein's game plan was to play it out in H2 himself, but, you know, having lost that, he still does have a barracks up somewhere. He did build it 
uh, with that forward settler wagon over here. So he's still going to be committing oh. to this age two agenda, spending all of his resources. He did send 700 coin himself, but not uh, using that on the age up. So if he's able to outmouse, outmass uh, the the Chinese player, he may be able to get a good engagement over here because uh, the Chinese player is going to be hard pressed to reinforce that uh, bulk of units. Uh, but that is of, way too risky. I yeah. think that's so risky. Considering Mido's like, he could just... ship bows and then trap with like five dots from the racks and pull the Yulons back and just completely kill that army. But exactly. But Mido's uh, going to be. We do see. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Mito's going to be aging up. Uh, um, Mito, yeah, yeah. And Kaiser not being too aggressive with his Yulins, but an engagement Ooh. going out over here. Good pull from Mito, getting the anti cab in time. Dops are just going to kill these bows, I think, and then they'll have free rain on the pikes. Kaiser's hero should be snaring the, the bows. So there's only uh, three dots yeah, on his here. He's gonna get crushed, my turn. Like, the dots are probably even gonna stay up engagement too. Oof, yeah. You know, I was thinking there are so few dops here, they might actually get all, you know, killed off before uh, the pikemen are able to do anything, but engaging very intelligently so as to minimize the potential damage for the Cheng pikemen on the uh, Yulins, and he lost, yeah, lost. just yeah. took minimal losses there in Kaiser Klein. On the other hand, Mido is almost aged up right now, but it's going to be a while before his first uh, Fortress Age units pop out, so the time is now for Kaiser Klein to make something of his... Um, He's putting his... his dots across the map as well. <laughs> yeah, it's putting beautiful it from that. Forcing those dots to sprint, so instead of running at 4.5 speed, they run at like 5 point something. It's, oh, it's so funny, it's just... I don't it's even so know what to stupid, say. It's so stupid, I think. It's so stupid, I swear. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's good spot. Oh, he gets two vills immediately. Pot. This is going to be so hard to hold, actually. This is such a sick timing. Yeah, like, how fact, does Mito... I think Mito's actually called at least one... He's called the sentries. He hasn't called the irregulars, but, um, you know, the first batches for uh, China popping out right now, but... Like you said, this is going to be really hard for him to hold. All of them getting slayed here. Red intervention. Coats. Intervention. Nine red coats. That's going to do a really good job in helping him to hold. Uh, they do really well against uh, both the Doppelsonders and uh, the Yulins. And especially with this positioning, you know, they're just. Uh, all of these Yulins are going to have to walk a very long time and very awkwardly around. Um... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's so. I think he's going to clean it up. These red coats, these positions are based. Like between the town center, the age up wonder, the village, the consulate, and they're so hard to get to with these Yulons. That was such a sick cleanup, actually. That was an amazing trade. He lost about two bats of cheap China units for this entire Yulon. There's a bunch of doppers on them. <laughs> yeah, that was, he was a... just good. That... Yeah, he had like triple the military. That was a beautiful engagement from Mido, and that's going to help him stabilize an early fortress. But looking at the score, I don't think Kaiser Klein's actually in the worst spot. He is aging up himself right now, and while that trade went kind of poorly, and uh, you know he lost more units than he would have liked to, and dealt less damage than he would have liked to, it, it's still okay for him from this position. Uh, he's ahead in score, and while he's a little bit behind in terms of you know getting those age three units out, um, at least he has like twelve Yulins on the field, so he can continue to pressure. He's got a raid coming in from the north over here. He nicely placed those two Chang down just to protect from raids, which is really nice. Mm. Nice move from him. Five Meteor Hammers coming out, and he's going to take down this Rax. I don't even know how he scouted this Rax, but he found it. I think he just came across it. Um, so this he's got he's got like a window to do damage before Germans are like get sort of like a mass together from a shipment. Ah, uh, five skirms. Nice skirm shots. Five being just enough to snipe down one Cheng Dao. Uh, but Mido himself, yeah. I think, uh, I don't know if it was intentional, but there was a... S oh yeah, it might be intentional. He's trying to pull his uh, red coats with the Cheng Daos. Either way. He, he, yeah, he, d he did that to get them out of skirms, and so he, I think he saved one, so that's quite nice by him. Kaiser is rebuilding the racks. He did ship three war wagons. Um, I'm not sure if war wagons was the right choice. It could be okay, because I think China should be massing cab at the moment, but we'll have to see. Oh, and he made four more war weapons actually, which is quite nice. This is a good 
buffer to any cavalry that might throw at him, basically. And uh, I think Maito might be going for like an in infantry-based composition in response to that. <clears throat> so yeah. maybe 10 skirms. So you um, see uh, five meteor hammers popping out for the Chinese player. That was a little over a minute yeah. ago. Um, oof, more cav coming in as well as another batch of red coats. Um, let's yeah, see what he's nice. training. I don't think he's got any more skirmisher type units in queue. So while you know uh, having shipped the three war wagons and lost his barracks, you know Kaiser Klein is kind of behind in terms of his own skirmisher count. Uh, Mito, on the other hand, is not making many skirmishers of his own. So they're basically, uh, you know, at the same. Uh, what do you call it? It's the same position at this point. Instead, uh, Mito is yeah. actually choosing to go for a much more melee oriented uh, composition with these cavalry units, uh, red coats, and Chengdao. I think Maito, because he, yeah, he ships skirms, which is good. He identified that he killed Kaiser, so that Kaiser's skirm count should be low. So he should, obviously has like a base position. Skirm red coat does well versus, but obviously he still can't engage because Kaiser's a good kite. Probably can get an insane value out of just kiting these meteor hands. Just all infantry versus skirm Yulon, basically. So he can't really take an engagement yet. He needs more sure more cavalry batches to actually get the proper like melee composition properly in like jammed in there. He, he needs way more cab. Yeah, here comes another uh, cab batch. I think he's gonna go raid. And he might catch this set the wagon on this one. This could be quite nice for him. And meanwhile, up Kaiser's army's pop. Um, guarding this mine as well, so he, yeah, he's going to lose free basically. He needs to get this cab back out of it, which he is doing. I know that Mido, um, you know, going into the you know middle of fortress and late fortress, he's actually very diligent uh, about raiding with his Chinese cavalry. You know, you see a lot of players. Um, oh, oh, oh no! Oh, All that six is so huge. Gonna go down there, and that's like you know fifteen hundred resources. If I'm not no, not that much, but still like. Almost a thousand resources for the uh, Chinese player there. Mm, mm. That's something not you can't really afford elite army Germans because obviously they tend to outmatch you for a long period of time with their insane shipments. Obviously, German units are worse than China units overall, but they just get so many more from shipments, and their eco is pretty solid as well from three settler wagons, so they can just get so many units out. He get, he's he's going to need him. I think Manchus would be really good. Or maybe just iron, uh, yeah, iron troops again. We'll have to see. Look at the Kaiser guy. slowly get Kaiser slowly getting balanced composition now. He's getting more skirmishers out. He's got a nice war wagon mm -hmm. mass and decent amount of Ulans. I mean, my Maito's just mostly got heavy infantry, which is not ideal. Yeah, having lost those cav, I wonder if he has any more cav on the field besides this, uh, just this batch of four. It doesn't seem like uh, he has any more cavalry of his own, the Chinese player, and, you know, without that, this mass of, um, oh, we do see the iron troops coming in. That does help yep. to kind of balance out his composition. Of course, you know, if he just had, um, you know, all heavy infantry, no cav, he would kind of be just ousted by, um, uh, Kaiser Klein superior mixed composition. Unit composition. Yeah. 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 But uh I'm not he needs to get his anti <laughs> He needs to have Acer. They're just chilling back there. There we go. <laughs> he must be aware that Kai's point his hero is beneath them. He needs to get his hero back actually. He's quite vital in all fights. Like just cover mode that fucker and train decide. <laughs> I'm wondering. Oh, there he is. You know, actually, in fact, Kaiser Klein just sitting right on top of that explorer. Yeah, yeah. He's got so many hit points, but it actually does give uh, Mido a little bit of line of important line of sight. So maybe he'll remember that um, explorer is there and that he should revive him. But at the very least, he knows he can't engage on top of that right now. Yeah, he he needs. He's got so much HP. Look at that. that two and a half thousand HP in cover mode. 
crazy. I think how many skirm and wall wagon shots that is. I can't be bothered to do the math, but it's a lot. I think Kaiser's just waiting on his next shipment before he's going to push out. Probably going to be one of the mercenaries, like you mentioned. Uh, that could be... I'm not sure. He does have both Black I Riders reckon... and Jaegers, so it's going to be the Jaegers, most likely. I reckon Jaegers, yeah. Versus this unit composition. He is retreating, Kaiser. Maito is going deep. And also, Iron Troops drop War Wagons insanely quickly, and the War Wagons seem to be on the front. China Hero is up. Maito is pulling it back. So he does re realize it. And he's going to get all these houses free, basically. Jaegers have come out to contest like, the skirmish of war, but I think Iron Troops in general are just better. Oh, God. I, especially going into this uh, match, you know, I, I can kind of sense the lag as well. I'm not sure where it's originating, but. Either way, a big engagement coming out here, but all of the Chengdao, you know, getting split across uh, all of the units of the German player here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice chat, nice chat. That was intentional, but... Yeah, but here so comes many of the them... disciples popping in. Redcoats are coming across the Blue line. Oh, maybe not. But I think my... I'm not sure who's going to win this. Yulons are actually just dropping so fast, so I think Maito will win. And this cover mode hero, like trade, he's gonna train more disciples as well. Yeah, he's staying still, so more more disciples are popping out. Yeah. It all depends on just like the reinforcement back, like what shipment is German gonna have on the way. It might be like nine or something, which could clean Mito up. And Mito needs to be careful of that. So I think the only think uh... this will... yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I think this will be like the next place of contention where we'll go. <laughs> yeah, they're heading. They're both heading straight over. There. <laughs> Just look at the army. <laughs> army. <laughs> Mitel d does pull back. Kaiser building. She don't see often, but I like this idea. This mine. This is last mine basically. Mito's still got two actually. He's got this one and that one. He's, he's got three even. He's got this one as well. But that's obviously a bit risky. So Kaiser's got to make use. Uh, eight. We see eight skirms coming out. After that engagement, <clears throat> I thought it had been, you know, quite in the favor of Mido. It went even, which I would have thought, you know, just kind of uh, alludes to Germany being favored. But I think Kaiser Klein, you know, keeping up the momentum, forcing Mido back, uh, and especially as the resources dwindle for both players and having to extend out on the map becomes crucial. Um, you know, Mito just has nowhere left to gather, and because he just, you know, lost momentum just slightly, now he's going to be pushed on the back foot, not be able to train yeah. units, and it's actually going to sway in the favor of Kaiser. Yeah, he's being forced into the engage where his build's positioned. Oh! Is that going to be enough, though? It's not, because the Jaegers kill all of that, basically. I don't see... He needs to be training cab back. If he is going to do this sort of composition now, he's got to do like a big cab swing. Because he's obviously not going to win the skirmish of war anymore without the iron troops. And yet he's only got. Sorry, go on. Yeah, there is still this uh, south position for Mido. You know, that's full. Uh, it's got a full silver mine right there. But right now, the German units are coming down to pressure that. And I think. Uh, you know, Mido being careful to evacuate his villagers, of course, some of them getting caught at an awkward position, so they're going to have to run uh, to an even more exposed part of the map in order to escape safely, so they aren't, you know, in, in the line of sight of the German player. But yeah, losing yeah. so many. At least four villagers there are going to lose the village as well. Um, so if there yeah. were any, uh, uh, any chance for Mido to, you know, oh, <laughs> we can even see uh, some Chinese units and some uh, German villagers just out of line of sight of each other. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. that definitely would have been something that, you know, would kind of help Mito stabilize the, or equal the playing field. Um, I don't think, he, he even if he go for them, because then that would just trigger Kaiser to go engage his army, which Mito doesn't want, right? He wants to hide this cav switch and try and get, because um, at the moment, Kaiser's on to cav, he's even, um, he trained more Yulon, any more war wagons on the and Mito's got like three cab batches which could be quite big.
So we do see a big bolster of cavalry for uh, the Chinese player here, and it's looking like go time, but uh, Yulin's coming in for both angles for the German player. Oh, and in fact, Vil's the U coming out as well. Vil's going to come out as well. You know, they're going to soak up so much damage. Uh, Mito's going to be forced to focus fire. And yeah, it's, we're going to have to see how it goes. You know, most of the Yulin's dying, actually, right now. Uh, of course, there's still uh, a few of the Manchus on the field, but oh no. They set the wagon tank. Plenty. Yeah. That's going to even up the score. Uh, Kaiser Klein stopping uh, Mido's momentum going into this game, having won the first match. <laughs> Kaiser was really mm. upset about losing that barracks in the early game, but in fact not being enough. Um, it is a bit laggy, both of the players. Uh, here we go. <laughs> look at everything let me look at my frames to see if I dropped any I've only lost I've only dropped 16 frames so not even half a second worth of lag on my end yeah all right that's gonna be a good game out I just want to take a look at the um, the military unit population so of course we saw um, there was actually if you take a look at between I think minutes like six and seven because uh, Kaiser Klein lost that middle rax he wasn't able to get his next batch batch out and that delayed his you know his push by like at least maybe 15 20 30 seconds uh, in early fortress age you know if he had just been able to maintain that rax and Mito wasn't as a able to have you know sieged that down and then eventually sieged the um, trading post as well we might have seen a different game. Although that said, maybe, you know, if Mido never got that Rex down, if um, he was forced back or, you know, just the game went in a different way, you know, we also wouldn't have seen him lost his, lose his uh, Chang, Chang Pikeman mass. And maybe he could have utilized that to also stabilize an H3. So either way, now we're going to see uh, a game win for Kaiser Klein. I think the turning point was when uh, suicide all the co uh, colonial units and then Kaiser did a lot of damage under his TC. Like yeah. Mito had, should have had, but I think Sieging Kai's TV was just a big mistake and he should have stayed under his TC with those colonial pikemen and bows and stuff. Because obviously German gets a lot of shipments from killing that and then that snowballs a bit and then he could idle a lot and then force Mito to ship red coats and then um, obviously still idled and then he couldn't really get a momentum going after Kaiser Ace later. You have to agree, you know, even like uh, in early Fortress Age, I think Mito was down in score at least by like 15 points throughout the entire duration. Um, and of course that was a, a result of losing those pike, his uh, age 2 mass. But um, it's going to be game 3, best of 5 series between Kaiser Klein and Mito. Uh, New Year's Classic Mono Civilization Tournament, same matchup every game. German versus uh, China here today. And this, the score is 1-1, one to one, so we are on a uh, equal footing going into game three for both players uh, still up in the air who's going to win this series and move on to the semifinals versus Deruga um, and he's playing Aztec so it'll be German China versus Aztec which I think I think Deruga would prefer to play versus China rather than Germans because I think Germans is quite a hard matchup for Aztec in general um, so on this map, who do you think's favored here? Oh, I would say I I feel like Kaiser Klein is going to go into it with a game plan. Um, you know, I think the trade posts are actually aligned uh, parallel this time around. Sometimes they're crossing. I think parallel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that favors any play, p player in particular. Um, a trade post map is something that's uh, good for both players. In fact, I think isn't every uh, map in this pool. I, I think. The last map is Cascade Range, so if we do go to a game five, uh, that might be something. It's actually hard to call for both players because you know China does have a pretty lethal uh, just unit spam shipment, unit shipment spam. But I think that would generally favor the uh, the, the German player, anyway. But on this map, what, Fer uh, Fertile Crescent. Sorry, on non TP. Yeah, on Cascade Range. 
and Cascade Range. I don't know. I think yeah, that would be better for China because obviously German has that. Oh, sorry, Harry, you, you cut out a little bit. We weren't able to hear you. Oh, um, I feel like on Cascade Range it would favour China, no? Because uh, Germans obviously have that shipment penalty. Yeah, I think the the second shipment timing is actually like the the critical moment for China. Like after they've sent, you know, the first one, whether that's like nine Chang, seven step, or eight bow, that second one is like the the most critical timing because I think that's when they're going to get the best mass out in comparison to what the Germans can do. Um, you know, because Germans they might send eight X bow, but you know they're usually going to send seven hundred wood or something else as their uh, second shipment in colonial age. So I think that's a a critical time for the Chinese on that map. But on Pearl Crescent, you know, we didn't speak on this one that much it is pretty even it's really hard to call but we're gonna see actually a forward village for uh mito here which inclines us to say you know he might actually be going for a colonial <laughs> game plan here again yeah he's sending the goat out <laughs> and the treasure contention oh kaiser got it <laughs> mito a bit unhappy so i think it was uh probably kaiser that was the first one to contend on that given the uh explore hit points but oh jeez kaiser klein doing a really good job getting out of that snare again just finding the exact right yeah. timing and uh, mito's not going to press it just gonna oh oh uh, why did you go for <laughs> zero was in line of sight of it so i don't think uh mito is actually going to take too much damage here i think that oh never mind I he's just going on for the hero I'm, i wonder if he's training at the side Ah, oh, certainly that could be what he's going for. Oh, whoa, the lion in fact bugged out. It didn't actually continue to attack the uh, German explorer. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, I didn't know about that mecha mechanic. I thought the lion was actually going to attack the uh, the Chinese explorer oh, directly it, after I thought, it. I thought, I thought it does. I thought... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. So actually... Um, I, swear, I swear it attacks back after getting stunned and then punched. <laughs> You'd think so. Yeah, exactly. So I think because it was stunned but wasn't being attacked, it just kind of forgot what had happened, you know, <laughs> with that uh, <laughs> Chinese tranquilizer dart. And, and now Kaiser Clan actually lost his explorer and fed the Chinese player 45 experience points. Um, not it's also good. It's going to yeah. delay his TP as well. That's the main thing. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely true. I think that's, yeah, like you said, that's the main thing. I don't think losing scouting for Germany is that big because, well, I mean... Uh, us casters are clued into Mito going for a non-standard uh, game plan here, but usually you can kind of anticipate what China's going to do, and it do also doesn't really affect your game plan as Germany. Um, but yeah, the, the trade post is the big loss here. You know, the settler wagon having to walk so far in order to build this trade post, that's like so many villager seconds lost. It is huge, yeah. It's basically having like a two less fill age up for like a whole minute or so. Yeah, he's obviously like, got to walk back as well. It's like feeding the uh, the Chinese player like a hundred wood treasure. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he's not going to try and steal. Them. It's like just there, and he wasn't going to try and. Steal them. Okay. Uh, oh wow, an F3 <laughs> war. <laughs> so I'm not sure if Mito actually saw that. Um... He must have seen that with the. Video. I know that for sure Kaiser Klein saw uh, the villagers of Mito and that's why he kind of skirted around. So we might actually see some super aggressive gameplay from both players. Maybe uh, Kaiser Klein's going for a proxy tower rush? Oh, we see the barracks, so not a Pro tower rush in particular. Rex. Yeah. Is he, he's, he's going for dops by the look of his vill distribution. Um, I'm not sure if Mito, he may have been a bit slow on the uptake when he saw the set the wagon when the set the wagon first came into like the village line of sight. Um, so my, I, I, he's gonna see it now. He's gonna see it now. Just I think he's just confirming it. Yeah, there he goes. He I does. Think was... He does go out for the rack. Um, an in base war academy on to this is just the correct call. You don't really want to go forward. I think, especially versus Germans, who can just have like two Ulans to raid you. Yeah, you know, the the work academy being in this position actually kind of puts that village at a liability. Um, because, of course, we know that uh, Doppelsonners are going to be uh, Kaiser Klein's unit of choice here and probably going to follow that up 
First shipment is actually uh, three settler wagons, so what I wonder... Uh, I wonder... Oh, okay. So the first dot batch popped out. It was four Doppelsodners, and he's just pulling them very far back, not choosing to aggress. Probably going to go for a timing with the second shipment. Um, of course, that shipment's not going to arrive. What I'm just saying here is maybe those two additional two Yulins and another batch of units. Uh, Mido can actually, you know, pressure this barracks besides having uh, Chukonu parked outside of it, but he's going to need some siege units if he wants to, you know, really pressure it. So Kaiser Klein actually doesn't have a lot to be concerned about yet. Um, and of course, that's going to give uh, Kaiser Klein some more time to, you know, just decide what he wants to do and how he wants to go about this engagement. Yeah, you got to be really careful. So the dot pop can just completely screw you over, especially with like four flanking dots. Like, this could be, he's even got his unit either sides of the Raxes ready to trap with like a dot pop. Yeah, there we go. There's a dot pop. And look <sighs> at the amount of damage they. And then the Yulons are going to get on. Oh, nice pull by Mito there. But these dots are just doing insane damage. I mean, just look at them. They're doing a lot of damage, but almost all of them dead at this point. Uh, a lot of the Chengdao pikemen being taken down, but almost all of the. Uh... Doppelsonders are dead themselves and getting onto the Yulins nicely, uh, protecting those Chukonu. You have to bear in mind, guys, set the wagon 700 wood whilst Mito went 8 bow, 9 pike as well. So Mito's more invested into this sort of push, whilst Kaiser just made two and just got a pretty good trade out of it, I think. Yeah, that trade did go in China's favor. Certainly. I think he only lost like maybe 12 or 15 uh, of the Cheng Pikemen and then maybe like three Chukonu, while, whereas uh, the German player lost uh, three cavalry units and uh, all of his Doppelsodners, nine Doppelsodners. But Kaiser Klein's actually not, okay. not in the worst position. Uh, he's got more Dops in queue. Uh, again, those are going to be in a risky position unless he chooses to engage right off the bat, which it just might not be the right timing. Oh, uh, no. There we go. More dops on the Chukonu. More dops. Not he enough Chukonu. He needs Yulons with. It's just like, I don't know why he's popping them into. Yeah, like I said, it just wasn't the right time. You know, all of his, he just did not have the unit mass compared to what China had. Now with the seven step shipment, which is going to help repel and just uh, keep these, this very small Yulin mass at bay. Of course, uh, you know, step riders are pretty weak against other cavalry, but when they're outmassed like this, um, it's all good. And I think this well, Rex... Kaiser this Klein Rex does... will go down. Yeah, he should give it up. Kaiser does have another uh, Doppelsodner in queue, but whether or not he's going to see that out to completion, I'm not entirely sure. Of course, he could get um, <laughs> a nice engage if he pops them out to the south, the very south. Oh, wow, okay. Just all so right. he gets them on the uh, Step Riders. But now using um, the Yulins on the Step Riders, I'm not sure if this is the right timing. Of course, he doesn't have the Yulins out, the Dops out yet. Excuse me. Uh, they just the units are just dots on the right. The Yulons it should be the other way around. He just needs to not fight that. He needs to. He need, just needs to go. Yeah, two dots down for free, basically there. I just run the Yulons dots here and just try and raid, and then like sack this racks, and then just try and age up or mass some more Yulons and then <sighs> age. He is getting good trade with the Yulons. He's gonna be forced away when those pikes get there. But he's going to get snared, so it's always risky doing that. He does get away, actually. Never mind. So Kaiser Klein does have the economic lead at this point, and he is continuing to commit to uh, age 2 units. But, um, he shouldn't, though. See... I don't think he should. He's so outmassed right now. He should just try and age or... Yeah, just judging by the scores, you can tell that Mido is ahead at this point. But, you know, I'm going to continue to duke it out. Um, I don't think Mido, you know, having sent 700 coin, he actually isn't going to commit to the age up himself. He's just going to continue to push it in age, uh, age two himself. He is training full anti-cab batches now, which is the right call. And these two can in this, which is quite a big deal. So yeah, this this entire army can just do a lot of damage versus Kaiser's lot. Um, is Kaiser close to aging, or is he trying? Uh, Kaiser actually hasn't hit up, so I think he was considering it, but then he committed more to the, uh, you know, the colonial yeah, game plan, bows. and then he said, yeah, exactly, he shipped bows, but it's not going to be enough. I think Mido's actually distributing to age up right now. He's got 900 food, 700 coin. 
course, he's still got this huge match mass, but it's also going to be bolstered by the Summer Palace. So, you know, having outmassed the German player who's fully committed to this game plan, um, you know, he's not really concerned about not having any more reinforcing units coming in, uh, you know, by it's, way of uh, his yeah. War Academy. And he's even it's still also, winning. Yeah, it's also smart. He's put, he's like basically saying to Kaiser, just because he's so outmassed, he's pushing. Like, it's kind of like a mind game. Like, if he even trades these units, probably okay. Yeah, exactly. And we actually see Kaiser Klein coming ahead in this one. There's still a lot of Yulins left alive, and I think um, all of these, uh, step, uh, excuse me, Chukonus are going to go down. I didn't actually expect that. I thought Mido was going to come slightly ahead, but uh, that wasn't. That was about the best that Kaiser could have asked for. Uh, he yeah, killed... I mean, does it does it matter though? <laughs> Exactly. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I think Mido was content that even if he lost like that, you know, he's going to come away with eight Chukonu, so it's still not like a full total loss. Um, and he killed a lot in a lot of the Yulins. So even though that went more to the favor of Kaiser, I would say, like he Mido's ahead at this point. So it doesn't even matter that it was an even engagement. Oh, wait, he's not a... Oh, whoa. Are you right? I think you're right. Where did all those resources go? Am I missing something? There's Cossack. There's... What? Why is he not aging? That was he... like a secure win. Was I looking at the wrong player? Oh, you know, like... I think I might have been feeding you the wrong information. I think maybe Kaiser Klein was the one that was distributing to age up. That was my mistake. Oh, oh I see. Okay. <laughs> so it was actually Mido that was fully committed to the age two game plan, whereas Kaiser, uh, you know, uh, he did commit to it, but he also aged up in the back of it. Um, so yeah, that's actually not too bad for Kaiser. Yeah, Mito has got quite a big mass of units actually at this point, and he's just literally Kaiser has literally three bows and two yards to hold it. He should have a shipment ready, um, which I think it will be nine units, and he'll train a batch of skirms because he hasn't got a stable right now. I think I oh, know he does have a stable still up here. Um, but I think you should train five skirms and either ship skirms or ship Yulons at this point. Yeah, I think he's probably going to go for the skirmishers. I might have also expected uh, three war wagons, considering he's uh, seen the Siberian Cossacks. But you know, he also knows that uh, Mido is actually making a lot of uh, Cheng pikemen and Keshiks, so maybe he'll just go for the skirmishers. He's always going to have uh, the ranged advantage lead with a batch of skirms and uh, eight skirmishers popping out. Plus, he'll have three Yulons with which to defend against those Cossacks should things go Ari. Uh, oof. Yeah, it was villagers. Very awkward position. They're gonna be alright in this fight, they're just gonna take. Okay, Mito might pull back here. I don't know why he's not aged. His units are just too bad in color. I, I think. Has he got any unit upgrades for them? He does have some unit upgrades, to be fair, but. They're just not really enough, I think. Uh, standard army hit points actually coming out for uh, so like you like you just said Mido does have the uh, age two upgrades for his um his age two units um, so he is you know committing more to this game plan than uh, <laughs> is uh, advised. Um, <laughs> it's advised. It's good web. After the Cossacks, he has switched to Brit Consulate, by the way, which is important to note. So his That's army is gonna get. A few more HP. That is really important. I hope he pops out a batch of red coats. He does. Uh, I wonder where those are, or maybe he just doesn't have have that have all of the export. Oh, we do see a mass. Achoo, what is this? Did uh, okay. No, that was just. <laughs> I thought that was just a completely different mass of cavalry that was uh, standing idle there, but that was actually um uh, all of all no, that no, uh, this... Mido had. Yeah, yeah. It was the same mass. Yeah, yeah. He should get his hero though. He's almost full HP. I think he's. Oh, I thought he was gonna go get him. Like that China hero is so important. Um, it looks like Mito is trying to with these Cossack movement. I think he's gonna try and trap him. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Gonna have to be very careful. He's gonna need to preserve his Chuko Numas because even if he's able to hold all of the Yulins. Whoa! What is this cavalry doing? 
Nice. All of that getting sacked there, and that's just gonna make it all the more harder for Mito to win from this position. He has got a huge bow match, which I think Germans are gonna struggle to deal with actually. His Yulans aren't veteran. He also, bows are also much faster than skirmishes, so and he's also being snared. It's actually... He's getting he's he's getting cleaned up though, because his anti Let's get the snare off. His anti he needs to like put his army to yeah. Like you said, it's just like that. so much there you weaker. Go. Yeah. I, I think this engagement would have well, actually gone really <laughs> well for him. <laughs> you know, you had, just dying, I... had Mido just not lost the his hand cavalry like he did, this engagement actually wouldn't have been too bad. I think all of the Yulins would have been dead, but now seeing uh, all yeah. of them just clean up the Chuko knew Mido's gonna go out. Oh, oh why didn't... Oh, he was so far ahead. Yeah, that's gonna be game two to Kaiser. I'm a little bit upset that I, I miscalled uh, the Fortress Age age up uh, for either the, either of the players. Um, I meant to cancel units to age, missed it. <laughs> Throwing under stable, I lost that earlier. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, yeah, even in early early age two, Mito was way ahead. Yeah, after like I think it was like dot pop got like no value. Third dot pop got no value. It was just, yeah, it was just a big fuck up from there, basically. Alright, Kaiser, some nice execution, uh, going up to the Fortress Age and then utilizing his tech advantage. Mito was never really able to, you know, capitalize on, you know, just playing the matchup differently. Uh, you know, him being in Age 2 and committing to that, of course, he needs to make a big push in early Age 3 in order to keep Kaiser Klein down and not let the, the Germans' mass of, you know, units just snowball out of control and let them get their tech advantage and abuse that. Um, so Mito just wasn't able to do that, and uh, it just kind of gave Kaiser Klein free reign once he aged up to do what he wanted. Even though the engagement, to some degree, could have been okay, um, a little bit, a, a few slip-ups from Mito and, uh, you know, just Kaiser Klein took it. The problem with the last engagement, sacking his anti to keep that snare off to get value out of his crossbows, but in the end, he just lost too much anti cab and then just got... Absolutely. Harry, here, here, you still here? I think you cut out at the end there. Oh, Harry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> okay, okay. Hello? Yep, I can hear you all good. Uh, I'm just listening. I think there's like a storm outside. Oh. <laughs> So that might be why I'm cutting out. <laughs> ah, I see, I see. It does just happen with Discord, you know, Discord's just kind of generally like that. So either way, it's not the biggest deal. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we could, we could switch to Skype or something, but I don't know. Right, and we're going to be launching into Game 4 Best of 5 series between Kaiser Klein and Mido. Uh, the map is going to be Mendocino. Uh, the last map in the series, should it go 2-2? It's going to be Cascade range, but at present, Kaiser Klein is leading the series 2-1. to one. Of course, Kaiser Klein playing the German Civilization against uh, Mido's Chinese. Um, this is a round of eight match. Winner is going to move on to the semifinals versus the Aruga. Yeah, the Aruga Aztecs is important to note. Um, we have the key note of this map is that there's four TPs. Um, I'm not sure who that favours. I'm not sure. I, I, I doubt more players will take more than two TPs, to be honest, unless they're like really far ahead. Um, so I don't think this map... This is like, apart from livestock and TPs, this map, this matchup isn't really that map dependent, I think. I think this one... This, if it's similar strategies, I think this one will pay, um, play out similar to the previous map. Just because... Each player will build like one or two TPs and then pretty much do like the same thing, a similar thing. Exactly. But we'll have to see. Mito you know, has like interesting strats and stuff, so. Right. On that map, we saw like pathing being the most important, you know, aspect to the gameplay. Uh, you know, especially in early H2 where it's like the dops have to come from all different angles in order to be effective. 
Mendoza Union is kind of a map with awkward pathing. You can see, like, if there were contention around this mid area part of the map, there's the gold mine, all these trees, the trade post sockets, the cliffs, all these obstructions that, you know, you just have to find a way to use to your advantage. Uh, quick carry, what do you think about the, the hunt situation? Um, I'm taking a look for both players. Oh, Kaiser has two very safe hunts. Uh, this one is relatively safe for Mito should he start hurting it in, but it is a bit more exposed. This one, A-OK. -okay. Um, I'm just concerned okay. about I'm just concerned about that one in particular. What do you think of that? I mean, he scouted it at least, so he'll probably hurt it on time. Hopefully, I think yeah. I think it's fine. It's it's kind of wandering towards him again. It's it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. He does have line of sight of both of his northernmost hunts, um, and then of course uh, he can kind of intuit that there's going to be another one over here. Yeah, the mines the mines are also even as well, so that's fine. It's kind of like symmetrical. Um, who got that 80 food or 90 food? Kaiser did. Okay. That's yes, quite big, me. considering you went early market. <laughs> so oh, that was perfect. a nice pull by uh, Mido with his uh, disciple there. I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, there is quite a bit of distance between the, the German Explorer and the Chinese one. Um, and even Kaiser Klein's able to go back on unsc previously unscouted territory. They are both going to scout out a 90 coin treasure. At least I know Kaiser Klein is going to be made aware of it. Maybe Mido didn't actually uh, get to see it. Um, He'll see it now. He'll see it now with the Disciple. Oh, yeah. There you go with the Disciple. <laughs> He's going to continue to chase after the German Explorer and just force it away out of his uh, side of the map and then probably go back and take that 90, what was it, coin treasure? Yeah, that's a really nice one for uh, China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's heading back to it now. And Kaiser's going to immediately come back, actually. Kaiser likes to do this thing where he's like constantly chasing a melee hero and just keeps shooting it and shooting it. And then whenever the melee hero chooses to like target him, he just runs back. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of annoying, actually, because you just like want him to go away, but he just doesn't. He, he might get, he's going to get here in time to, to try and contest this treasure, actually. Or was he? Oh. No. No, okay. not this time around. But he is going to get some more uh, shots off on the Disciple, but he, yeah, again, he's forcing himself into a corner. He's got to be really careful. I think he oh, is going to get away getting... safely. Oh, oh. No. Nice. So he's at least going to take a lot of damage here. You know, Kaiser Klein in both games has done a good job escaping his Explorer. I think he's just done it again. Oh my god. Yeah, he has. <laughs> oh. oh, no, he hasn't. Okay. Yeah, the timing has to be so precise with that to be able to escape your explorer. But it looks like he does do it this time around. There is another patch of trees coming up, so he has to be careful with that. But there actually is the disciple coming up, coming up too. He wasn't finished yeah, off earlier, so now he's going to get some good use. Yeah, just classic. <laughs> Both these players are pretty good with hero control overall. In fact, uh, you know, just the explorer having been snared like that that's going to delay his trade post not delay it necessarily but it did put him at risk of not being able to put it up had he lost his his explorer but uh he did a really nice job keeping it alive and he is going to be able to get this uh this trade post down with his explorer and then i guess he's just gonna I, use that mm -hmm. i sorry i kind of like that he brought a set the wagon because kaiser knows that maito is quite a smart player and obviously would probably try and deny that TP going up and have his Explorer and Disciple there. He's checking this one now. I wonder if he'll go on to the next one. But basically, Kaiser's hero would die before that TP would go up, so he brought the set the wagon down here just in case he needs to finish it off. Yeah, certainly. And uh, Mido being made aware that Kaiser's aging up, his time for exploration around Kaiser's base is going to expire shortly, at least once that first yeah. shipment comes in, uh, he's playing it a bit risky now since Kaiser aged up like at least 25 seconds ago. He, he, he's going to get out in time, I think so. And we do see the concert that build again. Yeah, I really like this from Mido. Uh, we did see him go for the Nine Cheng Pikeman in uh, game two as, his, uh, as part of his build order in uh, the Colonial Age, but that game didn't pan out for him, so I like seeing him go for the early consulate and th the three entered export here again. Yeah, I like this build actually. This makes a lot of sense versus Germany, honestly. He did go for the early TP as well, so that 700 coin won't be delayed that much. It'll be like straight after the export. Kaiser does scout it immediately. Um, I think. Uh, 
I wonder if he goes. He doesn't do a market with this build. I don't think he just had a market on Florida the previous time. Yeah, I think he's just gonna go gather it. Um, Kaiser adding a second TP. Looks like he's going for like a sort of straight FF sort of build. He hasn't built a military building yet. Um, this could work out in Maito's favour actually because he could burn a couple of TPs with the six red coats before any units come out. Yeah, I actually think I might have preferred to see 700 coin sent first because we can see uh, Mito distributing to age up right now. He's actually going to have a lot of uh, surplus food by the time 700 coin comes in. Uh, in oh, fact, is he? Yeah, I think he's oh. just now going to be able to send... Oh, no, I'm definitely mistaken. So 700 coin coming out right now. Actually, this build order was extremely precise. And, okay, okay, yeah. that's nice. In addition Your builds that, have to be really precise first. Yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> like you were saying. Anyway, what I was saying was uh, 700 wood was the, the four shipment that's going to easily come out from Mito, so a very precise build order. But as you are saying... Yeah, you have to have sort of precise builds versus a sieve like Germans because they're temp. They like kind of. Oh no, Harry, you Germans cut out fast. You cut out there. I think you were saying uh, something oh, did about. I? Yeah, something about Germany's tempo. Yeah, yeah. So you need a precise build versus Germans because they're quite quite a tempo sieve and can get big shipments out in units and batches and stuff. So you need to get like age three taking as little damage as possible and just get there fast, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, he is aging with the tower, shipping wood. He's putting um, forward, he's putting like more villages up, another one here. I reckon he'll put another one. Yeah, he's putting another one there. Um, we see a market going down. I think he'll build a war academy after getting some market ups, but we'll have to see. Um, so Kaiser's up already, 7.57, that's a little bit late, I think, for Germans, but that's okay, considering Mito's a bit slower. Um, I think Germans go 1k wood here. Yeah, definitely ha having done a more greedy build order, or not necessarily greedy, but just a different one, considering he already knew that uh, Mito wasn't going to be playing aggressive this game. Um, Kaiser Klein, he didn't build any uh, Ulins in Age 2. Uh, like we saw in the first game, he built two batches of five Ulins for ten Ulins in Age 2 in total. This one, he completely botched uh, 700 coin and just gathered the resources to age up. And so it's yeah. much greedier, but also much more efficient for, you know, just steamrolling in Age 3. I, I like I like this adaptation from the first game, because the Ulins in Age 2 didn't achieve him much and um he's obviously aged up much faster this game gonna send better shipments and he also Mito has to like ship nine pikes or do this red coat build regardless versus germans otherwise he's just gonna get idled by a potential yulan semi so it's like kind of like a mind game and kaiser's just gone straight ff and ship 1k wood whilst Mito is sitting in base with like a bunch of infantry units exactly <clears throat> you know what i find funny is that kaiser said what could i have done better in the at the um, end of game yeah. one, which he lost, but we're actually and this is here. literally it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just uh, you know, a revision on his build order that's gonna just make his age three push so much stronger. Yeah, Mito also going one k wood. I'm not sure if I like that, considering he's he's aged. Oh, he's dropping his second racks and probably getting some more market ups and probably building more villages and stuff like that. But um. I feel like if you age after your opponent, I think you need to go more military heavy because obviously Germans are going to have like a huge timing with their next military shipment because obviously Mito's mass is quite small. Oh, Kaiser's going 1k coin though. Oh, wow. So it looks like he's going skirt, mule on, black ride. I like this a lot. I would have liked to have seen, um, you know, uh, maybe a second barracks come out for Kaiser. I think with that 1,000 wood, let's see, did he get amalgamation? He didn't. I think he just built some more houses. Yeah, actually, he built, he spent uh, all of that 1,000 wood on just houses. You can see he's sitting at 150 max. Um, and he also got vet Lance, of course, as well. Yeah. But this is, this double TP from Germans is just so good for him. 
he's going to get so many shipments out. I mean, you you can see in the scores. I mean, Germ, Ger, Germans in this matchup generally have a higher score, but it's just getting bigger and bigger with like these massing. He's got, he's got like steel traps and stuff and shipping 1k coin. That's just so many units. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Moto probably wishing he went for a slightly different build order this game. Aging up to uh, Industrial should certainly would have given him some more uh, defensive tools. He does have some good shipments in Age 4 as is, just uh, 8 Meteor Hammers, 18 Ch Cheng Dao, uh, 17 Arc, and uh, 2 Flying Crows. Those are all really powerful shipments. Um... Mito did somehow pull out a bunch of units. It was like a shipment of 10 skirms and then like two batches or something. But he has pulled a decent mass out together. But whether it can rival this German army, I'm not so sure. It yeah, kind of depends on reinforcement batches. Exactly. And there's going to be a big shipment coming out for the German player, I anticipate. There you go. Uh, Black Riders. There we go. Luckily well, for Maito, it's not a big shipment for him. Because obviously he's got no cavalry. But... I think Germans just have way more stuff regardless. Absolutely. And those Germ those uh, uh, Black Riders are going to just have mobile firepower. Uh, you know, if he had shipped uh, Kaiser Klein, if Kaiser Klein had shipped uh, Jaegers, they might have been just kind of a bit redundant because there's only so much uh, your units can shoot, your skirmishers can shoot at Chengdao before they, you know, just kill them straight up. So, you know, you'll get a lot of yeah. overkill on those units, even if you ship the Jaegers, you'd have to do a really, really good job splitting, or just getting the position to where you don't really have to split, split micro. Um, so the, the, you know, shipping Agreed. the Black Riders, those are going to be like an insurance policy against any potential uh, cavalry that Mito has, and in addition, they, they still provide good DPS against uh, the Chinese composition. Yeah, it's just way safer. He doesn't need to take a risk, really. He's just like a little bit ahead at this point. Maito's being forced back. He's got two hunts left, quite big hunts, I guess, but they're going to run out eventually. Meanwhile, Kai's just got control of the entire map. He's going to go bone down Maito's TP, and Maito can't really contest it, really, unless he just pokes a bit. Oh, and these units uh, padding use... super yeah, awkwardly. Uh, yeah. He is massing some cav. Kai's is doing a really good job of hiding by the way. I don't think Maito's seen them once yet. Yeah, he hasn't seen them. And Maito's going to commit to this fight and then realise, shit, there's Black Riders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shipping five Meteor Hammers and two batches of cavalry is a huge investment for the Chinese player at this stage, but uh, all of the counter units for Kaiser Klein getting on those cavalry and then, of course, you know, just these Chengdao's pathing so awkwardly. It might not be the worst thing in the world, but I uh, apparently it's a bit laggy. Well, taking a look at this, there's still a lot of uh, Chinese cavalry and a lot of Chengdao still alive. Yeah, that was Klein's... surprisingly good for my turn. But Kaiser I Kla don't think it's enough. Kaiser's I still think Germans that. will have the upper hand here. It's really important the way Kaiser kites back. Uh, he's actually not kiting back now, but all of the uh, anti-cavalry and a cavalry going down for the Chinese player. While that looked bad for a second there, you know, Kaiser Klein has done a good job flipping it back into his favor. Still, uh, at seven Yulin still alive, and those are going to snare back the uh, Arquebusier. Yeah, that was where I that was where I might rode. Maito is trying to drop down the snared units, which is, he's doing a good job of, but still, how is he going to deal with this army? Exactly. He good just fighting. has a solid composition, Kaiser. Yeah. Oh! Chengdao pop. Chengdao are going to clean up the rest of those Yulins, but having lost so many skirmishers just in anticipation for those 11 Chengdao to pop, uh, he's going to be behind on skirm count by quite a bit. I think uh, Mito only yeah. has seven scrims on the field to Kaiser Klein's 27. Yeah, well. Kaiser, Kaiser just has a way better composition, and obviously, um, China can only train like specific com uh, units in like batches of three, usually. So it'll be much easier for Kaiser to get like a better composition out. 
I feel like Kaiser should just train some war wagons just to be safe. Yeah, I mean, at I this... Five... Oh. Go ahead. He has oh. got Jaegers out, so yeah, he should definitely train some war wagons now just to buffer that skirmisher lead. Yeah, I think uh, Mito kind of has to take to take a risk here if he wants to make it back and ship the Iron Troops, which would, you know, make him go even with the Kaiser Klein skirmisher count. Of course, he kind of has to count on Kaiser Klein not building uh, much more in the way of uh, ca hand cavalry, more Ulins or shipping Ulins, but you know, all of the options are left to Kaiser Klein. Even building a, an outpost forward to defend this coin mine, which is forward on the map for you know, it's on Mito's side of the map. Ooh. Oh wow! Wow, that was so perfectly timed. Yeah, that was clutch. <coughs> four, four, three or four cavalry there. For free, yeah. Oof, and just awesome, he's the... chained our coming. It's oh. like, yeah, it's kind of dire straits of Mito right now. He's in trouble. Like, look at this skirmish account. It's just insane. He's got too many. I think he's got more than 50 skirms now. Or probably like 50 skirms total. Exactly. He's sitting at uh, 32 skirmishers and 13 Jaegers, so almost a, a full uh, batch of uh, units. Full group, yeah. 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 And he is training nothing but war wagons by the looks of it. Yeah. Oh, he's, caught, he's just <laughs> waiting for the Manchus. <laughs> but yeah, if those are iron troops, it will be a little bit better, but... Yeah, it's just hard to get excited for Mito at this point. While he is forcing Kaiser Klein back to an extent, just judging by the military unit population, you can tell, like, uh, eating, yeah. You can just yeah. sit there and Zed move. It doesn't <laughs> matter. He's got enough skirms to probably one shot a cab, so it's just fine, you know? That's gonna be good game to Kaiser Klein. Uh, a sad face from Mido. Hard through first two games. Feels bad, man. Uh, he not did first throw two a couple. Games. I think the game on uh, Florida. It was... Florida, he won. Um, yeah, game two and three. Well, German. <laughs> <laughs> That is going to see Kaiser Klein moving on to the uh, semifinals versus Diaruga's Aztec.